to our Cumberland Valley Virtual Academy fourth grade students. It's great to be with you today. I am Mrs. Ingone from Silver Spring and we are going to do a little bit of moving today and um, some listening and then we'll get to do a bit of singing toward the end of our music class today. To begin class, I have just a short little tune I'm going to play for you. Let's see if you recognize it. Was that familiar to you at all? Yes, you probably recognized it was the very beginning of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. It also shares the tune with some other familiar songs that you may know. I'm going to play the whole song for you. Whenever you hear just that short little part, give me a little wave. Here we go. times did you hear that part? You probably heard it more than one time. Yes. Did you hear it twice? Awesome. Yes, that's exactly how many times you heard it. In last week's lesson, you were exploring form with Mrs. Shade. Form is the various sections of a piece of music and how they are structured. Some of the types of form that you might remember learning about uh, up through third grade are verse and refrain. If you think of a song called Get On Board, that was one that I know that our Silver Spring students practiced a lot and maybe some of you have too. Another type of form that you may be familiar with is a B form. So that just has two different sections and they may not come back. Listen to the beginning section of Twinkle Twinkle one more time. And think about what we call that very first beginning section. Here we go. So I'll give you a clue. It's a letter. All right, did you think of what it is? Go ahead and say it. You said A, you got it. That first beginning section we call A. Now listen to the next part. Okay. Now was that part the same as the beginning section? If you were singing along, you might have noticed that the words are different but also the tune is different at that part. So we need to call it something different. What do you think we could call it? All right, did you think of something? I wonder if you thought of the same thing I did. Let me show you here. Did you call it B? Okay, great, we're on the right track. Now, let's listen to the ending section, and I'd like you to think about whether we would call that B, or if something comes back, what we would want to call it. So here's the final section of Twinkle Twinkle. Okay, what would it be? Mm, I'm curious what you all say. Did you also say A? So our form of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star is A, B, A. I hope what you've noticed is that even short songs like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star do have that form to them and we can really listen to that and see if we can pick it out, we can really challenge our musical ears. Now that we've done some listening to a familiar song, 
we're going to shift gears a little bit. This is a piece called Minuet in G by Ludwig van Beethoven. He's a German composer who lived in the classical era. So this song will be in your links to your descriptions. So I'd like you to take just a couple of minutes and go listen and see if you can pick out the sections that are the same and the sections that are different. And then we'll come on back and we will check out how you did with your listening exercise. So go ahead and I'll see you back in a couple minutes. Welcome back. I hope you liked listening to the minuet in G. And that was um, many instruments playing as you heard, but oftentimes you do hear this performed just by the piano. Now, if you were listening closely, you notice that the beginning part does return. So the beginning section is called our A section. And maybe you noticed it goes for about a minute. So it's one minute and three seconds to be exact. And then when does that B section come in? Very next, right? So it comes in at about a minute and four seconds, right after the A section ends. And you hear that through a minute and 52 seconds. But then at the very, very end, the ending section, we return to the A. So I hope that as you were listening, when you heard that B section, you thought, ooh, this doesn't sound familiar. But then as soon as that A came back, you thought, aha, I've definitely heard this part before. So now we are gonna go ahead and do some movements. So some movements that I suggest to you would be some things that we've done in class before. Maybe tapping our shoulders or patting our head, maybe patting our legs, or you can get up and march too. Really, any movement that shows the steady beat will work. So you should do one movement for your A section. Now what do you think about the B? When the B comes in, should we keep, let's say we chose tapping our shoulders for the A. Should we keep doing that for the B section? Right, we don't want to do that same movement because the music sounds different at that part. So what we should do then is pick something else. But then when we hear that A section return for about the last minute of the song, what do we do? Yes, we go back to the first movement that we chose. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes again. Go back out to that link and listen to Minuet and G and do the movements that you have suggested. If you need to take a moment to select your movements, that's fine too. All right, I'll see you back in a little bit. Last year, when you were in third grade, you probably performed some of these pieces of music, just as examples. Row, row, row your boat. A rom sam sam. Hey ho, nobody home. Did any of those sound familiar? But you did not just sing the melody. You sang them with multiple melodies going on at once. So maybe you were divided into two or three groups in your music class and you sang some different things at the same time. Do you remember what this is called? When there are more than one melody going on at a time? It is called Harmony, that would be the word. Yes, you've got it, harmony. Last week with Mrs. Shade, you also reviewed some types of harmony that we practiced last year. Can you recall what they are? Just go ahead and say them. Yeah, some specific types. Um, one specific type would be around where one group starts singing a song. And once they get about a phrase or two in, the next group comes in and they're singing the same exact song, but they're just singing it at slightly different times and it fits together and it sounds lovely and you have two melodies going on at the same time. Now last week, you did also begin learning two songs, Land of the Silver Birch and Canoe Song. So I am going to put the words on the screen for you here so that you can take a minute to review both of those songs and you can feel free to sing along with my voice and uh, me playing the piano 
And then if you need to practice them a couple of times a piece, that's okay. Um, you may absolutely go ahead and practice as much as you need. Um, and then what we're going to do is come back and I'll give you some new directions for something to do after you've practiced both of those songs. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Now that you've had time to practice Land of the Silver Birch and Canoe Song, we are going to shake things up a little bit. So I will put the audio for each of those songs here again, but the lyrics that you are going to see, you're going to see two sets of lyrics. So when you hear me singing Land of the Silver Birch, you are going to sing Canoe Song. And then the next audio will be canoe song. And when you hear me singing canoe song, you sing Land of the Silver Birch. All right, I know this sounds like it's gonna be maybe a mess, but trust me, it won't be. I promise it will not be a mess. It might be a little bit rocky at first, but go ahead and practice it more than once. Music involves a lot of practicing and you will you will get it and then we'll come back after you've had some time to practice that go ahead fourth grade Fourth grade, I just want to thank you for great work today with Land of the Silver Birch and Canoe Song. I really hope that you enjoyed creating harmony even though we aren't all together. Why do you think the type of harmony we created today is called partner songs? Could you sing it all alone? Right, you couldn't. You need a partner to be able to perform it together and create the harmony. There are many songs 
that you know that we could sing as partner songs. You can't just plop any two songs together. There have to be some things that they have in common. So think of that over the next week. If there are other songs you could sing as partner songs and maybe give them a try with a family member who would be willing to sing with you. Take care and have an excellent week. Thank you.